Are you planning a road trip in Japan during the winter season? In this video, I'm going to share with you practical strategies for navigating Japan's winter wonderland, the key aspects of winter driving, how to drive on Japan's winter roads, essential driving techniques, including preparing your vehicle for the cold. So join me for a comprehensive guide to winter driving in Japan. <laughs> driver, how to handle icy conditions, are winter tires necessary, how to maximize tire tractions in slippery conditions, etc, etc. So coming up, here are your questions and doubts answered with the best options and recommended precautions to take while driving through Japan's picturesque landscapes during this magical season. Number 1. All-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive. If you're renting a car and driving it through snow and ice, it's important for you to know the kind of system the car is driving since you'd have the power to choose. AWD, which stands for all-wheel drive, refers to a system where all four wheels can gain traction independently of each other. An AWD system is added to a car by giving it three differentials. That means you'll find three gearboxes in the car, mainly in front, center, and in the rear, which allows your four tires to get superior traction independently of each other to handle all types of weather conditions. A 4x4 system, on the other hand, also known as four-wheel drive, is a system where the engine powers all four wheels evenly. This type of system is excellent for heavy-duty hauling and pretty extensive work activities, which is why you typically find this kind of system on a pickup truck. It's great when your car needs a good balance for the inside and outside wheels on rough terrains. Lastly, 2WD, which means two-wheel drive, referring that only two of the four wheels put the vehicle in motion and keep it moving. There are two kinds of two-wheel drive, essentially the front-wheel drive and the rear-wheel drive. In a front-wheel drive, the engine's power gets routed to the front wheel and has better traction when driving uphill or on slippery roads, ideal for everyday driving and moderate usability but compromise on the sporty performance of a vehicle. For a rear-wheel drive vehicle, they offer better acceleration in this case because they're pushing ahead with the back tires instead of pulling it. And it makes turning from the rear an easier movement too. That's why it's commonly found on pickup trucks and truck-based SUVs. When comparing all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive to two-wheel drive, the main distinction we're looking at is traction. This traction matters and can make a difference during extreme weather conditions like ice, snow, slush, or mud. So here's to show you a test of the three systems for grip braking and traction. Winter tires on this pickup, like a lot of vehicle tests, it all still comes down to the tires. And you can see a lot of slipping with the two-wheel drive, showing the lack of traction. Coming on with a 4x4, you can see that there's much better traction. The four wheels actually move evenly and even so in the snow, now we're reversing. You can see that there's much better traction and the tires actually grip onto the pavement much better. And finally, for the all-wheel drive, this is a Murano with winter tires. On acceleration, you can see there's almost no slipping. And these three videos are actually taken on an uphill. Pretty clear winner, yeah? So the conclusion is that all-wheel drive and four-wheel drive provide better handling. But choose an all-wheel drive vehicle if you can, especially if you're gonna be driving on rough roads in harsh weather. Meanwhile, if you're renting a car in Japan, the average rental during the winter season is a four-wheel drive vehicle and it's a good choice if you're traveling with lots of luggages or intending to go to the mountainside. Quick bonus content here to show you how to choose for a 4x4 or an all-wheel drive vehicle when renting a car in Japan. Under vehicle options, not only can you opt for the transmission type, but it's where you specify the need for a 4-wheel drive vehicle and winter tires. Number 2. Winter Tires In the world of tires, winter starts as soon as the temperature drops below 7 degrees Celsius. So that's when it's generally recommended to switch to winter tires when you drive. It is at cold temperatures the rubber in normal tires hardens and becomes less efficient. Driving conditions can be unpredictable and very changeable, with road surfaces ranging from dry to humid, wet to snowy, or icy. So be sure to drive with winter tires on as they feature better grip with more treads that act like claws on the road surface, giving you more traction on slippery roads and also improve overall handling of the vehicle. 
Another bonus tip, if you're traveling during the months of winter season, most car rental companies will provide winter tires by default in the snowy regions as stated in the green box here. However, snow chains are not provided by default and you gotta reserve them in advance. But take a lot of precaution because they cause damage to the pavement on normal roads as it's predominantly meant for higher traction on ice and snow. Number 3. Traction Traction is defined as the ability of a wheel or tire to hold the ground without sliding. And it's the hardest to maintain in the winter when ice and snow make the road surface slippery and harder to grip. Affected by a number of things, including the amount of tire that's in contact with the road surface, traction is the key to maintaining control of your vehicle. Jerking movements or sudden speed changes can cause a loss of traction. So four keys here for how to drive in the snow without losing grip on the road. The first key is to accelerate smoothly. Apply gentle pressure to the gas pedal, even if that means you take more time to reach your safe cruising speed. Placing too much pressure on the gas pedal may cause the wheels to lose traction and spin. So keep things slow and gradual when accelerating. The second key is to brake gradually. Similar to the gentle pressure you should use on the accelerator, use your brake pedal for gradual slowing rather than sudden stops. Slamming on the brakes is a recipe for skids in the winter weather. The third key is for those who have an anti-lock braking system in your car. If your car has an ABS system, you may feel pulsating when you depress the pedal. If this happens, do not let up the brakes. Keep your foot firmly planted and trust that your ABS is going to do its job to keep the brakes functioning. And the last key here is to reduce your speed when driving in snow and ice. It's easier to stop when you're driving at low speeds, and in this season, you should always be driving at a significantly slower speed compared to your summer drives, especially when on snow-covered roads. Snow can make braking and accelerating feel entirely different to you, and keeping your pace in check is the best way to ensure you have enough time to stop safely. Additionally, higher speeds can lead to diminished tire traction, increase your risk of skids, and may lead to oversteering and understeering, where your tires lose grip and cause a loss of control. In either situations, you don't want to be slamming into your brakes because that will only send a car into a fishtail or unforeseen situation. That much being said, the idea to stay safe and sound is to just drive slowly. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy a slower pace of life on your holiday. Number 4. Be prepared. Every time when I rent a car during winter season, I always make sure to have my handy pack with me. It consists of a few basic essentials that will help me tie through the common situations my car may face and reduce a lot of hassles. So, inside this pack, I have a windshield cover with two fasteners and it opens up to be a cover for my windshield to prevent ice and snow from piling up directly on the glass. Unless you don't mind handling your car like this. Usually, a snow brush is provided by the car rental company, but ice is a bigger problem than snow here because it sticks to your windshield and hard brushing may leave scratches on the glass which is not good when you return the rental vehicle. So yeah, using a $5 windshield cover will simply save you a lot of trouble. It's light and can be reused over and over again. Next, I have two Ziploc bags over here. They're recycled packaging from my online shopping, but they're great for keeping my side mirrors away from ice and snow after I parked my car for an onsen when it was snowing. Unless, you want to come back to your vehicle and have more to clear apart from your windshield. Third thing in the pack are these plastic cards. I prepared two of them and these cards can be your train cards, membership cards, etc. And they're used for scraping off ice from my windscreen and windows without scratching the glass. Super handy because you'll definitely have a card like this in your wallet at all times. Lastly, I also prepared a pair of gloves, which is supposed to go over my winter gloves when I'm handling all the ice and snow. Last thing you want is to find your hands wet and freezing, so I always put these on before I start to clear the power. So yeah, be sure to prepare a handy pack like this for your holiday and I'm sure something so simple will serve you a long way. Number 5. How to drive on snow-covered roads Japan is one of those countries that gets a lot of snowfall during winter. And a lot of times, the roads are covered with snow and that means you won't be able to see the markings on the roads. Like this one, where the road is a two-lane carriageway, so we have traffic coming on in the opposite direction on our right and I'm driving on the left. The road divider is covered with snow since the last week of November. Hence, there's literally no road markings many times when you're driving outside of the city area. So how do you tell where to drive and how to maneuver the vehicle in such conditions? Well, the key is to look out for traffic lights or lampposts along the sidewalk on snow-covered roads when road markings are not visible. You also want to keep left or right depending on the driving convention in the country. And for Japan, we keep left since vehicles will be passing on your right if you're on a two-lane carriageway. 
What's more, the reason to look out for traffic lights and lampposts in snowy Japan is because most of the time, there are signs that tell you the speed limit and specific directions of where the road in front is leading to. Like for example, this one is showing you a go straight or turn left in front. Or this one, where each arrow defines a block of road, meaning it's a go straight at the next intersection and go straight again at the second intersection. Right here, this one says two walls and essentially it means the center line and it's telling you where the road divider actually is. So when the road is actually covered in snow, that's where the line divides and you will actually know where to travel on. Some signs will even tell you where the stop line is, such as this one. So yeah, it's pretty clear and as long as you aren't going too fast, you can usually tell where the side of the road is because the lampposts and traffic lights is a gauge for the curb side of the lane. Number 6. Always fuel up your gas to full. So one of the most important things when starting up the vehicle is to always make sure that you have a full tank of gas in your car. And over here, I'm actually taking this video pre-vacation. This is my car in Singapore. And over here, I only have half. And this is okay if you're in a city because the gas stations are nearby, but it's a definite no-no if you're actually in the mountainside. This is because when you're in the mountains or when you're going off-road, you have no idea where the next gas station is gonna be. So it's always important to fuel up your gas to full when you start your vehicle for the day. Also, having a full tank of gas makes sure that in emergency situations or if your car stalls in nowhere, it actually ensures that you're able to power up the car and that means that you can actually start up the heater, which actually keeps you warm while waiting for help to arrive in winter. One last thing that you need to know, usually the fuel tank of the car is actually in the rear and we have the engine in front of the car itself. When you actually fuel up to a full tank of gas over here, you're actually putting a lot more weight in the rear of the car and that actually balances out with the engine in front. A liter of gas actually weighs about 0.75 to 0.79 kilograms and if you actually talk up about 20 to 30 which is the average capacity of a Japanese car they will actually put an additional 17 kilos in the rear of your car itself and having that weight will mean that you actually have a lot more traction in the back of the car so make sure you actually fuel up your gas tank to full number seven keep ice and water away one more thing that I always bring with my heavy pack is this bottle of anti rain it's a very small bottle that I got off online. A very light layer over your windshield and windows will help you keep off a lot of ice and water. And I use a magic sponge to coat a light layer over the glass. So any water will simply beat up and slide off. Oh yes, make sure to apply some pressure when you're wiping down as the hydrophobic solution may leave some patchy streaks. So yeah, a bottle of anti-rain like this will dramatically improve visibility by keeping ice and water off. But you can tell if it's applied or not unless you do it yourself. So best to have one if you drive. Number 8. Distancing Distancing is important, especially when driving on frozen roads. If you're traveling too fast, it gives you lesser time to react and for your brakes to reduce the speed of the car. If you're traveling too near to the vehicle in front, you have lesser distance to compensate for any unforeseen situations. So when it comes to driving in winter, you always have to keep your distance away from vehicles all around you because traction is limited due to ice and snow. That said, the key is to leave more space for braking. Keep a watchful eye on the road and landscape ahead so you'll have plenty of time and space to anticipate obstacles and come to a gradual stop. If you're behind another car, be sure to allow a following distance of 6 to 10 seconds rather than a typical 3 to 4 seconds to ensure you'll be able to stop without rear-ending someone. Number 9. What to do in snowstorms or deep snow? If possible, avoid driving in snowstorms, also known as blizzards. Visibility conditions are really bad and that's when most accidents happen. Even the locals try to avoid going out when a storm is brewing outside, so do what the locals do. That may also mean that you need to allocate more time to buffer for your holiday schedule if you're planning places to go. But otherwise, if you're caught in one, make sure to drive slow and take note that when in deep snow, do not let your car come to a complete stop. You want to keep the momentum of the car by keeping it moving. Number 10. Managing Emergencies and Uncertainties when in doubt, find a safe spot by the side of the road and stop to look for directions. Use a GPS that shows roads, intersections, and live updates of traffic conditions. In Japan, dial 110 for the police and 119 for the ambulance. 
If you're renting a car, there should be a hotline for you to call in case of any emergency, such as a dedicated number the car rental company would have provided you, which a lot of times include emergency roadside assistance. Another way is to ask for help from other motorists on the road, or if you're in a remote area, search the web for solutions. Don't forget to take photos or videos of the situation if necessary to provide factual evidence for the authorities in charge, as well as the claim for insurance if you have bought any. Last but not least, winter driving is not about how much experience you have, how many times have you driven in the snow before, or how well you know the roads. The conditions in winter are ever-changing, and every time you're driving, you should be paying 110% of attention to the roads in front of you. Oh yes, make sure you have your insurance in place and never be complacent. In my next video, I'm going to share with you 10 important driving tips that can save your life while winter driving in Japan. So be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell to stay updated. I hope this video has shared some helpful and practical insights for you and let me know in the comments your winter driving experience in Japan. Happy holidays and safe travels. Bye!